Hi, everyone. This is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatry Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. But that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode. And I'm wearing my glasses, which are probably going to reflect, and I try tilting them up. But I have to, I have a little crib sheet here, so um, I can't see it otherwise. Today, I'm going to talk about something that maybe some of you are wondering about. So you might be looking for a very inexpensive computer, and you're hearing the terms Chromebook, and you're hearing the terms Cloudbook tossed around. So I'm going to tell you what both of those devices are, and I'm going to give you my opinion on you know wh where they fit in a different person's uh, needs. So I have two here. Both are HP. Our beautiful blue one here is a Cloudbook. This white one is a Chromebook. You can see they both have lots of ports on them. They have ports there and ports there. You can see, I'm, gonna sh I'm not going to open up both of them, but they are very similar inside. They tend to have a really nice, spacious keyboard, a trackpad, um, you know, of course, a, um, uh, a screen, a webcam, all that kind of stuff. And they're, they're very, very cheap, which is why they're pretty desirable. So people like buying these. Now, this, this, there are exceptions to these rules, guys. So obviously, a super high-end cloud book is called an expensive laptop. And, a, and there are super high-end um, Chromebooks. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the cheap stuff here because that's probably what you're interested in or if you're looking for an inexpensive device. So, so what are they? They are basically devices that have been fine-tuned to be as inexpensive as possible because they are designed to mostly be on the web. And, and we, if you're using your computer at home, you're mostly on the web. So think about all the things that you do. I just listed a few things here. So surfing the web, map and travel plans, shopping places like Amazon, YouTube, social media like Facebook, Netflix, uh, maybe um, things like Skype and Google Hangouts, the video kind of chat sort of stuff. Um, uh, there's Office Online things like Google Docs and uh, Microsoft Office Online for your documents and spreadsheets and presentations. There's business software. I, I used to use when I was um, many years ago, I used to use QuickBooks, like a copy on my computer. My wife has her own small business. She uses QuickBook Online. It's always updated. It's always perfect. She does it through the web. Uh, things like uh, banking, etc., etc., email. I think I mentioned that. But all those different things, all the things that we do on a regular basis, we do usually on the internet, which usually means we're interacting or we could be interacting through a web browser. So these devices are mostly designed for people that are doing those sorts of things, which is most of us. And because of that, they don't need to be super powerful computers. So what are some of the good things about these devices? And this applies to both Cloudbooks and Chromebooks. Remember I showed you them, they're very similar. In fact, I would say they might have slightly different internals, but the internals are pretty similar on both of these devices as are the ports and everything else, right? So so what are their, what are their benefits? Well, again, they're cheap. Those two devices that I showed you were under $200 each, and they are functional devices. One was $170, one was $180. I bought them as refurbs, but you can definitely get devices. You know, I've seen Chromebooks for, for around $100, so they can be very, very cheap. And they usually work because they are designed specifically with the Internet in mind. They have lots of ports on them, so lots of USB connections, either in the form of USB... Um, it's regular USB or USB 3.1 in the newer ones, or even USB-C in some devices. They usually have external video connectivity with an HDMI port or USB-C. They have Bluetooth. They have Wi-Fi. They have nice keyboards. They are, are typically fanless because they use low-powered, inexpensive CPUs with integrated graphics. They don't produce a lot of heat because they're not cranking out tons of data. They don't make a lot of heat, so you don't need a fan. Cheaper, less better battery life because of that. And speaking of battery life, they have fantastic battery life. Often seven, eight, nine, ten hours of battery life. So these devices can go the whole day of school or the whole day of work for most people without carrying around a charger. I hate carrying a charger. It's just one more thing. You don't have to do it. You're not looking for an outlet anywhere. You're just good to go on these cheap devices. So that's the good. What's the okay? Well, the construction. Construction is nothing to brag about, but it's absolutely adequate. It's usually fantastic plastic on the lower cost devices. The keyboards are, are very nice, like I mentioned, and they're a, a good size, even for my gigantic hands, but they're not going to be like an Apple keyboard. You wouldn't expect that. 
The touch pads are probably the weak point in a lot of these devices. Very functional, but not the greatest. Certainly not a luxury experience, but you get used to them. They have lower resolution screens that have poor viewing angles. So they're using a cheaper display because they're saving money. And it might be like a 720p display. Believe it or not, that's perfectly adequate for Word documents and watching movies and surfing the web. It's just fine. If you compare it next to a really expensive display, you'll go, oh, it doesn't look so good. But if you don't compare it, you're not going to notice much of a difference. Um, because they have these lower power CPUs, they are they basically can't do higher functioning, like really big, complicated things because they don't have the power in their CPU. They rely a lot on cloud storage, and so they have very small um, solid state storage on board. Now, they don't typically have SSDs, which is a more sophisticated kind of storage. They usually have eMMCs, which is kind of like if you took a memory stick and you soldered it to your motherboard, it's an eMMC. So it's a slower type of storage, usually 16 gigabytes, um, 32 gigabytes, sometimes 64 gigabytes, rarely that much. So a limited amount of storage, but typically enough for what you need. Speakers are very loud often on these devices, but not super high fidelity. Um, and so, so those are the okay parts. So what is the difference between, oh, they have a webcam, and usually the webcam is, but good enough for chat. So what, what are the differences? The difference relies in the operating system and the concepts behind the two. So, so it, before there were Chromebooks, there were netbooks. The networks were underpowered Windows computers that ran an old copy of Windows XP, and they weren't very good. And so then Chrome came out with the Chromebook in 2011, I believe. Um, and the Chromebook basically uses the Chrome operating system. So it's a completely different operating system from Windows. That very, very, it's very lightweight, and it's basically there to support a Chrome browser. So it has to have all the IOs for the displays and all that kind of stuff. But it's basically just a support structure for the Chrome browser because you're living in the web. Um, and because of that, they, the Chromebooks boot up very quickly because the, the, um, you're mostly on the, on the Internet. All of the, your higher level management is done by Google. So you're not worrying about viruses. You're not worrying about updates. You're not worrying about really anything like that because everything is done externally. You don't have a lot of that stuff that happens on Windows computers where over time they get slower and slower and slower because you have all this junk that's kind of running around in your, in your, in your software and in your, um, uh, in your operating system. So that's not there. So they tend to continue to run quickly too. Um, and, and they're great. So no virus, very fast, never slows down, does the job. That's the Chrome operating system. What's the hardest thing on a Chrome operating system? I think for some people it's going to be figuring out how to get your printer to work. It's not very hard at all. It's just a little more difficult than all the other simplicity of this system. So if they have a, a friend that can do that for them, they're going to be good to go. So what about, what about the cloud books? Again, all the same wonderful characteristics as the as the Chromebooks, except the Cloudbook runs a full copy of Windows 10. So this is a much more robust operating system. And it's it's the sort of thing that if, I mean, you know, Windows is Windows. It's, it, it's, the, it's the good is also the bad. Because it is so robust, it's complicated. Because it's complicated, it takes longer to load. Because it's complicated, you're gonna have the potential of more conflicts. You have the ability, now they want you to reside in the web. That's why this particular book's called the stream, streaming media. Um, they want you to reside in the web, but you can load real programs onto this very small hard drive. So you can, load things like Microsoft Office if you're not going to always have an internet connection. So maybe you're someplace where you go camping, you're on an airplane and you won't have an internet connection where you can still have Office with you. Um, or you could, uh, you could load specific programs that are Windows only. So I, for instance, use a, um, a web design program that's just a Windows program. Well, I could not operate that on this device, although I could do web design doing something like, um, uh, you know, WordPress, right? But because that's web-based, but I couldn't do my little software, and then I'd have to use this. Now, I will tell you, I wouldn't run that software on this computer because, because it would be too slow, but I, if I had to, I could do it. So, so these, if you have simple software that is exclusive to Windows, 
Well, you're going to run it on a Windows computer, not on a Chromebook, right? Because Chromebook can't run it. But you are not going to run things like Photoshop or a, a complicated video editing program. They're just not going to run very well. It's going to be a very unsatisfying sort of experience. But you have some flexibility. Ah, but with, with great power of Windows 10, you have great responsibility. So now you're going to be stuck waiting for those updates that, that when you start your computer up and you shut your computer down. And those slowdowns, they happen when you run programs that reside on the computer. You also have to worry about your viruses and malware and things like that and potential conflicts between programs. So this is a much more sophisticated operating system, but you have to be a more responsible steward of your computer to keep it up and running. So what would I recommend? So if you were a person, a typical person looking for a second computer, just to maybe keep at the bedside or at the coffee table, just to kind of noodle around on, uh, check do your basic home task, or if you were a person that was not very computer savvy, or you wanted a computer for your kids, I definitely say go with the Chromebook. They're dirt cheap, they're almost at the level of being disposable in far, as far as cost is concerned, and they will do the job. However, if you're a person who really does, are, you're in places where you need to have, let's say, Microsoft Office running and you don't have an internet connection, or you have to run other programs that are maybe simple but exclusive to Windows, um, or if you need specific network connectivity with a business network and your IT folks are more comfortable connecting a Windows-based computer rather than a Chromebook, and I think you can connect Chromebooks in some way or another, but if they, you know, but I'm not, I, don't know how, I don't know how you do that, but I think you can. Well, then you want to, the, the Windows. You want the, the Windows computer. Either way, you're going to be happy with either computer. I find that generally a Chromebook with less memory, so this, this Chromebook has two, gig, uh, uh, two gigabytes of memory RAM. This one has the, the, uh, the Windows Stream or Cloudbook has four. They actually, the Chromebook runs a little bit faster because it's that simple, lightweight uh, operating system. They both get about the same battery life, that kind of stuff. I mean, th these are neg negligible differences. So, um, uh, you know, I think, you know, basically you, uh, you're getting a very similar sort of uh, experience. So, that's my opinion. Go Chromebook if you're looking for simplicity. Go Windows if you need Windows compatibility. Either device is dirt cheap. Uh, both devices work pretty well considering how much you're paying for them. And if you get some time, please give my podcast a listen. It's free on iTunes. It's my wife, who's a clinical psychologist, and myself. I'm a board-certified psychiatrist. We talk about everything, including our kids and current events and psychiatry and psychology. If you want to know more about me, I write a personal writing blog called drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. And in fact, I have written that blog on both a Chromebook and a Streambook to see that it could be done and it can be done. Um, so that uh, you can find just by looking up that web address. Um, and have a great day. Bye. Oh, subscribe if you can and like this video if you can or not. Bye. Ah, I forgot one more thing. Um, newer Chromebooks will have the ability to run Android apps. So, of course, Android is the operating system from Google for their phones and their tablets. And just like a Windows computer, Android apps reside on the device itself. So you are now going to have a situation where you can run Android apps on a Chromebook. The Android operating system is in a container, a ba like a, you know, a, a software container, basically, and it interacts with the Chrome system. And Google says that it's going to be safer and malware, malware free and all that kind of stuff. I guess time will tell with that. So it should still be a more sophisticated system and less worrisome than Windows. But you are going to have programs now that reside on the device. And so that does mean that you have the potential of conflicts. You do have some potential of viruses and malware. And you have to now talk about more storage and maybe a faster processor and different things like that, too. So with the great advantage of being able to do Android apps is now you have these apps that reside without an Internet connection. And, and it also gives you access to things like Skype, which you can't currently do on a Chromebook. Now, you can do other video chat on a Chromebook, but you can't specifically do Skype video chat. But with that, you're going to have the conflicts like you do with the with the Windows system. So it's six to one, half a dozen of another. So I just wanted to mention that fact because that is also information that you're probably hearing. Like, what is this about running Android apps on a Chromebook? 
yes, it is possible on some of the newer units, and it will be possible probably on all the units as time goes on. Um, and it does offer some advantages, but it also offers some disadvantages disadvantages. I guess you don't have to load any apps and then you have this basically a Chromebook. Take care again. Bye.